Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, this will be my new room, which freakishly in the viewfinder right now looks exactly like my original setup, which, um, yeah, that's pretty good. It makes me feel like I'm returning back to <laughs> when my channel first started and everything. Um, I haven't posted in a little bit because I did move up to Moscow to go to the U of I. Um, I'm an architecture major. I have been my whole adult life. I just have dropped out and gone back to college so many times. And uh, during the pandemic, I decided um, when my job shut down and they were just kind of basically like, um, you go figure it out. Um, I decided that maybe I should have kind of more of a career that'll take care of me in case anything like this ever happens again. I'm gonna go to school to be an architect. I think I have <laughs> still like four years left at this point, but that's okay. Either way, I was gonna be 33 regardless, but now I can be 33 and have my degree and all this debt, and then maybe I'll have a career after, <laughs> we'll see. College doesn't guarantee anything. I do kind of live off of a main road now, so I don't know how much background noise we're gonna get and everything. I haven't filmed for like two weeks because I've been getting used to school and my classes and the schedule and everything, but, um, in the time between when I filmed my last video, the Barbie, the holiday Barbie versus the Cinderella holiday doll, um, I hit over a thousand subscribers. And as soon as I hit enough watch hours, I should be able to be monetized. And um, I just wanna thank you guys for that because honestly, when I started this like nine months ago, no, it's been longer than nine months. Um, when I started this channel last year, um, I didn't really think anybody was gonna watch it and I was figuring out my niche because I used to do these really awful makeup videos that were like 45 minutes long. This intro is going on way too long. I am so sorry, guys. Um, anyway, my channel is for adults. It always has been, it always will be. Do not watch this channel if you are under the age of 13 according to FTC and COPA guidelines, but let's get into the video. Okay guys, I'm sure you saw from the thumbnail what we are unboxing today, and I'm so glad we finally have these because the UK's had them for like over a month, and finally they came to the USA, and I'm super excited. So today, we are unboxing all of the new Disney Store dolls, and none of these are princesses, and I'm probably going to say that a couple times throughout the video, that these are princesses but they're not so I excuse me if I do say princess a lot it's just in my head at this point but we do have Alice, Esmeralda, Wendy, Megara, and Tinkerbell. I am super excited that we do have Meg and Esmeralda because I'm a 90s baby and those were very popular in the 90s um, and we haven't seen them featured in a while. We did get a limited edition Megara and Esmeralda last year and then it was kind of like a hint that we were probably gonna get some Playline dolls and lo and behold we did because the Disney store is really good at giving us what we want. Also we have those Disney princess um, fashion packs. I have some Disney princess dolls on the side that we're gonna dress them up in their little things but first we're gonna unbox all of the dolls and then we'll do the clothing. And here are all five of the new dolls inside their packaging. I just wanted to give you a close-up of each of theirs and then we will do the front and the back. First up is Alice from Alice in Wonderland. It does come in a jewel kind of cup box. There is her in there and everything and we'll get a closer look at all the clothing when we take her out. I just want to show you more of like the box art style. The side and the back of the box. And then here is the front of Esmeralda's box. The side and the back. There is the front of Wendy's box, the side, and the back. And then here is Meg from Hercules. And 
and Tinkerbell from Peter Pan. All right, guys, and let's get these ladies unboxed for a closer review. All right, guys, and here are the girls out of the boxes. I will be doing each one individually so that we can see their details up close. Okay, guys, here is Alice up close and personal. She is a deluxe costumed doll that is featured with a sparkling satin dress, puff sleeves, apron, and a hair ribbon, traditional Mary Jane shoes. She is fully posable. She's inspired by Walt Disney's animated classic, Alice in Wonderland, and she is part of the Disney classic doll collection. Um, everything she's wearing is made out of polyester, and it says that she's 11 and a half inches, but she's more like 10 inches, because she is shorter than the rest of the dolls, even though online it says 11 and a half inches. So, we can see the ribbon in her hair, her face up close, blue eyes, pretty minimal makeup, kind of like a mauve looking lip, brown eyebrows, very yellowy blonde curled hair. Um, her head can move from side to side and up and down, but it's very wobbly. Um, her apron, her sparkly dress, and they do have the bad kind of glitter on them that peels off immediately. The dress is frilled at the bottom underneath the blue, her black Mary Jane shoes, and then if we turn her around, um, everything continues into the back pretty well, and she is held together with Velcro. And then I'm going to show you guys her articulation real quick, but her articulation is going to be the same for the rest of the doll, so I'm only going to show it once. So Alice's articulation is in her wobbly head. She can move side to side and up and down. She has articulation in the shoulders where they can go up, down, backwards and forwards. She is articulated in the elbow and the wrist. Her legs can go forward, backwards, out to the side, all the way back in. Um, she has a bend and snap knee and there is no articulation in the ankle or anything but her ankle is flexible enough that you could probably put her feet into high heels and they would fit, but all of these dolls do have flat feet. Um, yeah, so her articulation is gonna be the exact same on every other doll. Okay guys, and here is Esmeralda, and I actually brought her um, limited edition version to kind of just compare the two and see how they look together. Esmeralda is inspired by Disney's The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Her deluxe costume includes a satin skirt, hair ribbon, puff sleeve blouse, a corset, and an apron with golden picot trim. Um, this says that she is an 11 and a half inch doll, and I would believe it. She does look like she is more of the traditional size. And yeah, she would be around 11 and a half inches, just a little bit shorter. These are how the two compare together. Very similar face molds. Obviously the limited edition one has more makeup on, redid eyelashes, everything like that. But I just kind of wanted you to see how they stack up next to each other because I'm pretty sure they have the exact same face mold because they're expensive to make and why not reuse the one for the limited edition doll on some Playline dolls. So oh, Esmeralda's head is a little more stiff than Alice's. Um, she does have only one earring. The ribbon goes all the way around and then comes back down under her hair. It is a pink regular ribbon. Her hair is curled in the back with minimal product. It's not too crunchy or anything. It's very shiny, beautiful, long black hair. Um, very thick eyebrows, green eyes. 
very nice spread lip. Um, the blushing on her makes her look really more like realistic and lifelike. And her costume is pretty movie accurate with the white sleeved blouse, um, the pin striped corset, the apron coming down, and then her skirt underneath the apron. She does have a little anklet on and the standard flat feet. And she does have three actual separate piece bracelets on her left arm. If we turn her around, she is Velcroed. The apron in the back actually, <clears throat> it's actually a nice piece that's tied together. And yeah, the colors continue all the way around. And that is Esmeralda up close. Okay guys, and here is Wendy. She comes with styled hair ringlets, is fully posable, inspired by Walt Disney's animated classic film, Peter Pan. Um, it says that she's an 11 and a half inch doll, but she actually is more like a 10 inch doll, um, just a little over 10 inches. She has a lace trim skirt with a neckline and her deluxe costume features sparkling satin nightdress with puff sleeves, belt, bows, and slippers. Um, in the camera, she kind of looks like she has this creepy, like, far off stare, but in person, she's really, really cute. Um, she is supposed to be more of like a child, so she doesn't quite have like an insane amount of makeup or anything. Her lips are a little more on the mauve side. And then we go down, she does have um, some nice lacing at the top of her dress, big poofy blue sleeves. The whole entire dress is blue with a lace trim sticking out on the bottom. There's a blue ribbon that's tied in the front and it does go all the way around. Um, you can see that her costume, all the details go all the way around and she is Velcroed in the back. She also has the flat feet with blue plastic slippers. Yeah, that is Wendy up close. Okay guys, next we have up Megara or Meg from the classic Disney movie Hercules. Um, she, her deluxe costume includes a sparkling gown with a satin sash and golden trims. She is fully posable and she is actually an 11 and a half inch doll. So working from head to toe, um, she does have glued styled bangs that go off to the right and then kind of curve around back behind her ears. Her hair is held in with golden metallic elastic that is Velcroed together to make kind of like a ponytail going into the back that is curled with minimal product and goes down past her butt. Her hair is brunette, but there are, are hints of purple in there. She does have upside down checkpoint looking eyebrows, very heavy winged liner, and purple eyeshadow. Her blush is poking through a little bit more than some of the other girls. She has also kind of a mauve red lip. It's a little bit on the darker side and everything. She does not come with a necklace or bracelets or anything, but I'm pretty sure that's very accurate to the movie. The top of her dress does kind of have some ruching and it is stapled down by two little, um, actually made out of metal metallic looking pieces to pin it down and then just underneath her breastplate there is um one purple ribbon going over the top of the purple form-fitting dress but it's a darker purple than the actual dress she is also covered in that glitter that kind of gets off on stuff it's not too bad but it's definitely coming off and then just around her hips there is another bigger ribbon that goes all the way around and it hangs off of her right side. It is also held down by a plastic metallic looking piece to pin it together. And the dress does go past her feet. Underneath the dress, she is a flat foot who is wearing kind of like, they're plastic, but they look like leather braided sandals that are flats. Her designs and details do continue all the way around to the back, and she is Velcroed in the back. That is Meg up close.
here is Tinkerbell. She did not want to fit on the stand because of her little plastic wings in the back, so I am going to be holding her, so if she's a little wobbly, that is why. Um, she is inspired by her look from the classic Disney movie Peter Pan. Her deluxe costume features glitter detailing and a mesh underskirt with translucent wings with fairy filigree. Slippers with fluffy pom-poms. She is fully posable and it says that she is an 11 and a half inch doll, which um, if you count from where her head is down, she's only a 12 inch doll. If you count where her bun ends, she is an 11 inch doll. And if you count where the tip of her wings end, that is 12 inches. So yeah. She does come with blonde hair that is split in the front. Her bangs wrap around the sides to both ears. She does have a giant um, bun in the back and pointed ears. She has very minimal makeup because she does live in the forest and she has kind of a cute mauvey pink lip, um, brown eyebrows, very delicate um, eyelashes compared to Meg and she does have a metallic top wrapped around her chest and waist. It is um, a strapless dress going down and it is held up by those elastic bands. Then underneath her top portion of her dress, it is a bunch of very glittered up shiny leaves. And underneath that is another layer of meshing that goes just a halfway up her thighs. Then at the bottom, she does have flat little slippers with pom-poms on the end that are both polyester and there are little bits of tinsel in them too to make them kind of shine up. Her wings are made of a very, of a pretty shiny um, translucent plastic and it does have little details on it that look like butterfly wings. Um, they're long at the top and pointed and then on the bottom short and round. And yeah guys that's Tinkerbell up close. Okay guys and there are the girls next to their fashion packs and then in their classic outfits. First we will be doing Ariel, Tiana, Aurora, and Belle. This is my descending order of favorite princesses, just in case you were wondering why I did this order. Ariel being number one, Belle being number four. And here is Ariel's fashion pack up close. You can see the overcoat, the dress, the bow, shoes, a basket with bread, and then just some of the artwork in the back. Next up is Tiana's. You can see her dress, headband, microphone, animal fur shawl, a menu from her restaurant, a pair of white shoes, and then here's the artwork on the back of her box. Aurora's fashion pack up close. She kind of has like a wrap or shoulder covering, a longer dress than Tiana, but the same length as Ariel's. A floral headband, purple shoes, and a basket full of berries that she has been picking in the forest. And then on the back of the packaging, there is the artwork. Here is Belle's fashion pack up close. It is a creative take on her blue dress when she is walking through the village. She also comes with a shoulder wrap and covering a blue bow and blue shoes, a book and a basket for shopping. And then here is the artwork on the back. Okay guys, I will get these girls undressed and we will return back with them in their new fashion packs. Okay guys, and here they are in their new costume designs and everything. And we will pick them off one by one so we can get closer details. Okay guys, so most of the dolls I'm using are from like the last run at the Disney store. So these fashions are meant for like those kind of dolls, but they can fit older Ariel dolls like this one too. And if you guys have been collecting Disney store dolls for a while, you know who this Ariel is. She is the one that comes with an ass ton of hair. She was just one of the regular Playline dolls in a mermaid dress that you saw earlier. The bow that comes with it, um, there is no way that could wrap around like 
huge chunks of her hair. So I just put it as like a little side bow in the front. Her nautical jacket does not Velcro or anything and it does have printed on details with um, no sewn edges, but it is very clean and stylish. Um, <clears throat> she does come with a little basket that is holding a sandwich in it. She does come with a dress similar to her blue peasant dress, but a little different with um, a more detailed kind of corset look with lines going down it and one squiggly line in the front with a light blue bow kind of adjusting right at the top where her cleavage would be. And then down on the skirt, there is a little water scene with Prince Eric's ship in the ocean, um, some fish, a clam, waves, starfish, bubbles, and dolphins swimming around. And it does continue onto the back and there are seagulls, another ship, and an anchor. She does have a fun kind of lace trim at the bottom and a blue version of the flat shoes that we've been seeing on the Disney princesses lately. It is held with Velcro in the back, the dress that is. And yeah, that is Ariel's new outfit up close. Now let's do Tiana. And I am sorry guys, I forgot to show you Ariel's dress just by itself without the jacket on top. As you can see, she has poof sleeves and it's very reminiscent of her peasant dress. And then here is the jacket, not on Ariel. Um, and it has a very square neckline. Okay guys, and here is Tiana's fashion on her. It does come with a golden pearled headband with a huge feather that looks like it would be on the end of a quill sticking up out of it. Um, she does come with a white-ish looking metallic microphone, a fur shawl wraparound that is very long. It is white fur and it does have an off-white lining underneath it. Her dress itself is in a very art deco kind of looking style, lots of trim, and there is lily pad blossoms like um, mixed in with a couple of trumpets right around where her breasts are. There is a golden metallic trim on the bottom, kind of like a flapper dress trim almost, but not quite. And it is held um, by a same kind of metallic looking um, strap holding it above her shoulders. She does have white flats that you've been seeing on the Disney princesses lately and a copy of the menu from her restaurant. Flip her around, you see that the pattern and design does go all the way around. It is held together with Velcro. The dress is mostly white. It is very form-fitting. It goes just above, um, <clears throat> it goes just halfway up her thighs and all of the little details and drawings are done with like a golden hue. And here we have Aurora, which I am so happy that she has this outfit because it is a completely different color palette for her for once, and it looks amazing. So she does come with a headband that is floral with golden trim and leaves and flowers inside. Then her wraparound is held together with Velcro. It also has flowers on it, and it is a dark emerald green going on a blue kind of tint. And there is her dress without the wraparound. It's very reminiscent of Ariel's peasant dress, except it has a collar, poofy sleeves, buttons going down to the corset. The corset is like a plum purple color with um, painted on details like a ribbon and a bow that are a lighter purple. The top of the corset where the poofy sleeves and neckline are is a light cyan blue. <laughs> then going down to the skirt portion of her dress, it is kind of like a watercolor painting where it starts off purple and then it kind of fades into a blue. And at the bottom there is a white trim, but on the actual skirt itself, there are some trees painted in there along with butterflies and flowers. And it's very reminiscent of the background art in throughout the whole movie. And it does wrap around all the way to the back. So there are more flowers and trees. Um, it is Velcroed in the back. 
She is carrying a very detailed basket full of berries that she has been picking in the forest. And then her flats are actually a light purple color. And yeah, guys, that's Aurora's new fashion up close and personal. Okay guys, and here is Belle up close. She had the same blue bow that Ariel has, so I just put it in the side of her hair right there. Um, she does have a gingham style shoulder wrap that is a blue and white plaid. It is actually um, sewn on together. It doesn't have Velcro to detach it, but it fits over her head really well. And then you can just yeah, you can put it like over her head, kind of like you would it when you're putting on your own shirt at home. Underneath, she does have a collar and a rose underneath the collar. She has white frilly shoulders. And then over the white is where the portion of her dress that continues down to the bottom is blue. And it kind of starts off looking like overalls and then extends into a dress that stops just below the knee. She has a white apron on with a ribbon tied in the front and the white apron has rounded edges on the bottom and they are cut with no seams. Very detailed basket that looks like wicker and it has a book in it that is a plastic mold. It is not paper or anything that has the castle that the beast lives in in the background. Underneath her apron on the skirt portion of her dress there is more frilly bordering going all the way around. Um, and then inside, in between the frilling, there is a ribbon that kind of shows like blue and pink books surrounded by roses with a yellow background. And the pattern does continue all the way around and as does everything else on the dress. And it is Velcroed in the back. <clears throat> and she does have light blue flats or slippers is what they're calling them on the website. And that is Belle's new look up close. Okay guys, so that is my brand new Disney store haul. Well, out of the girls we first unboxed, Meg and Esmeralda are definitely my favorite, but I like them all. Especially Wendy and Alice who were never like characters that I really, um, were attracted to when I was younger. I definitely watched the movies in the 90s, but they weren't like standout characters like Esmeralda and uh, Meg. Especially if you watch The Hunchback of Notre Dame, which I recently did during quarantine because uh, Disney Plus. But um, that's like a really adult subject matter movie. And it really talks about like political corruption, um, the religious stranglehold, um, quote unquote, like morals and everything like that, um, attacking a certain group of people, just stuff like that. And it, it really shows um, that more darker evil side of um, what adults do. And I really like that they made it into a Disney movie and it has fantastic music and great animation. Anyway, um, I think that's why I really like The Hunchback of Notre Dame and Esmeralda so much because of what Esmeralda represents. And Meg, in Hercules was always just so hilarious um, and I like that kind of strong independent female character that's always been my thing and her voice is just really good and she, when she's singing in the garden with the muses I absolutely love that song so it's just like a good all-around movie and everything and then as far as these new fashion packs go um, Tiana 100% is my favorite one out of all of them um, we never get to see her in like that kind of 20s flapper outfit or anything and then obviously Ariel in her blue outfit I love and even Aurora's is with the new color palette and everything it's just nice to see her in something different um yeah so that's everything guys um let me know what you think down below in the comments don't forget to like comment share and subscribe etc etc and I will see you guys in the next one thank you Hey guys, Adult Jeffrey here. Um, I moved again. Um, I am always moving, always changing up my space. Um, I live right off of a really busy, loud road now. So that's fantastic. That'll be great for my videos. So this is the new house I live in. Oh, 
I rent a room in this house. So there's two other dudes in it. And then you come in. And then this is my room. You can see my ring light bouncing the light around. Um, all of those boxes are full of dolls and crafting supplies. There's some more dolls on top of my dresser. Um, and then over here is the new doll setup on the shelves. And since I moved up here, oh, I haven't even said where I moved. I moved to Moscow, Idaho, so I can finish um, my architecture degree at the University of Idaho. And yeah, so that's where I live now. So um, I only brought up some of my most favorite dolls. So we have like the Silkstone shelf, some more Silkstone Integrity dolls, um, higher end she dolls, um, Dante Inferno, Jacob from Twilight, my creatable world doll that looks like me, um, an empty shelf, uh, there's some architecture books, I brought the big Tiana and Ariel up, the DC exclusive she -Ra. all the Rainbow High dolls I have now and they are all unboxed, um, a helpful message from Barbie, the, and then just, you know, some of my ancillary favorites and then of course my favorite Barbie doll house because it's the first one I ever bought on my own. And yeah guys, so that will be the new setup.